Hey guys, Tommy here. So I'm doing this video on Ethereum versus Ethereum Classic, and it's largely directed toward those who aren't active in the Ethereum and Ethereum Classic community who may not know what's going on so much, and I want to you know help inform you guys. Uh, I've been motivated to do this because there was a meetup recently for Ethereum Classic, and I'm sure some of those people who went there don't know too much about Ethereum um, or Ethereum Classic or maybe cryptocurrency as a whole. And it, it just makes me concerned for them. So again, just kind of motivated me to make this video for you guys, get some information and some things for you to think about out there. So just a couple questions here I want to present to you first. Uh, what makes a cryptocurrency valuable? What gives it its value? And I think a big part of that, of course, is the developers that back it. Uh, technology is great, uh, but as soon as we have good new open source technology, it can be cloned right away. So like Bitcoin came out and there are thousands of clones of Bitcoin. Uh, Ethereum's came out and there are a couple clones of Ethereum, it's a handful of them. Uh, and on that note, with the with all the clones of Bitcoin, there's actually thousands of clones of Bitcoin with market caps less than $10,000. So what makes Bitcoin worth $10 billion and all these clones worth almost nothing? And I think the two major parts of that are the size of the user base. The other part is the developers. So you really want to think about these two things too, between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. Ethereum has a healthy growing community that's been growing for years. That looks strong, has looked strong. So that's that there. And the developers have, again, been around for years as well and really are some super bright minds in the cryptocurrency world. And these are some of the things that attracted me to Ethereum. In Ethereum Classic, we have a community that rose very quickly but has pretty much tapered off. You can see the Reddit metrics, which I'll put a link to below. But the community growth has slowed down a ton. And the developers, we don't, you know, they haven't really proven themselves in the cryptocurrency world at large. So we have yet to see what they're capable of. So it's just a big gamble there. Um, and again, I'm a, I'm as an investor, I want, especially in this world that's already like the wild, wild west, I want as much stability as I can find. So these are some things that really create uncertainty. Uh, one thing I wanna talk about here too. So, and the purpose of this is, you know, maybe some people out there just don't know and you know, there's probably some really good people out there that just don't understand why the immutable thing um, is kind of ridiculous. Uh, but I want to kind of shed some light on that. So before Ethereum even came out, I had a vision of you know thefts occurring on the blockchain, and in an ideal world, we're able to stop those thefts or prevent them or reverse them, and. That is a good thing. That's something that we want. We have a lot of those protections in the real world right now. You know, credit card companies have those, and it's a good thing we don't have to worry about that all the time. Uh, and I think this is going to come to blockchain eventually as well. And Visa, Mastercard, these other companies surely are positioning themselves to be ready for that transition. Uh, and again, so this is a good thing. Uh, so those blockchains are not going to be immutable. There is, there is a difference though, you know, right now with money today, uh, governments have a monopoly over money. In the US, you have US dollars, uh, you know, in a lot of European countries, you have the Euro. So there's this monopoly on money that hasn't been able to be challenged. And this is something that cryptocurrency is changing. Now there's new sorts of money like Bitcoin, and these are going to grow. We're going to have more options. And this is a really good thing. It's going to provide competition for the kind of money you want to use. And so the video I made a year ago, which I'll also put a link to below, I talk about this uh, and it makes you think about the kind of money that you'll use in the future. And I think that the kind of money that we'll choose to use in the future is kind of money supported by the whys of uh, the company or the community behind it. You know, like a good benevolent community, you want to use that money, you want to support those things which you believe in. And I think this is a great thing. It's really going to empower the money that we use and whatnot. So I think that's a wonderful thing. But, you know, as part of that, of course, is we want to use money too that, again, is benevolent. And, you know, it, it changes our perception of, you know, goodness and true justice. And that's awesome. I think as a human, as a human race, we'll just evolve because of that. So in that being said, I think what Ethereum has done with the hard fork and uh, reversing the theft is worth 10,000 applauses. 
It was a victory. Uh, it didn't affect anyone negatively except the thief. You know, there was no blockchain rollback. I've heard that there was no blockchain rollback. It just, it essentially, the whole blockchain stayed the same. It just moved the, the money that the thief stole back to the investors. That's it, uh, you know? Uh, a rollback is dangerous because uh, it literally rolls back all the transactions. So anyone who's been transacting recently, you know, innocent people would have their transactions reversed. That can be a big complication. This was nothing like that. So this was a tremendous, uh, a tremendously good thing that I think the Ethereum community did. Very plaudible and gives me faith in the community. Uh, you know, on the other hand, you have the Ethereum Classic community, which basically justifies this theft. And this is something important to me. Again, the intrinsic values of the community, the belief systems. And I think that's something important. When I invest in something or I'm involved in something, I want to be involved in things that I support, uh, you know, the people involved, the community, the belief system. And again, I realize that a lot of people in the Ethereum Classic community probably don't realize uh, the, the fallacy in the immutability argument. But just to, again, give a quick example there, you know, they say code is law and whatnot. So if, you know, code is programmed to kill everyone on the planet, uh, does that supersede all human morality? I would say no. I would say it's about the intention behind the code and that's actually how fu things function in the real world today in our legal system. So, uh, so code, I do not believe supersedes human morality. Uh, so yeah, and I think as we go on in the future, with the future of money, again, we want morality in our blockchains. We want benevolence and we want, and, and again, the competition for those companies or whatnot fighting over providing good benevolence and, uh, and good justice will be a very good thing for us as humans. So, uh, also here as an investor, here's a couple things that I want to point out that are concerns for me that I don't know if you guys are aware of. So one is the Ethereum trademark which if it's enforced, uh, what kind of effect that can have. I think Ethereum Classic got a lot of its value because it has the Ethereum name in it. And truly it's a point of confusion. I have uh, friends and stuff who are seeking to invest in cryptocurrency and I have to forewarn them. It's not, make sure you don't get Ethereum Classic, it, Ethereum, you know? So I have to give my heads up and whatnot about it. There's a lot of clones of Ethereum out there uh, and these clones, we've got Expanse, Shift, Soil. None of them really have very high valuations. Uh, Expanse is the greatest Ethereum clone out there besides uh, this Ethereum Classic, and it's around one to 1.5 million. Shift is worth roughly around 300,000, and Soil is worth about 15,000. These are their total market cap valuations. So what makes Ethereum Classic have so much value? I think it's that the mind association uh, that people think it's similar or like Ethereum, but really, uh, the, as we go on in time, we're seeing more and more of it differentiating. And another important factor here, uh, which again, by the way, on the trademark, if the trademark were ever enforced, that would be a horrendous thing for Ethereum Classic. So a dangerous thing as an investor. The other thing I want to point out is when Ethereum goes proof of stake, which it's going to inevitably do, how the Ethereum Classic community is going to respond to that. Um, Clearly, everyone is not going to agree on it. Uh, you know, when Ethereum was doing this hard fork here, it had an 80% consensus. So I'm thinking, well, this Ethereum Classic, are what if they have an 80% consensus for, you know, going proof of stake or staying proof of work? Clearly, not everyone's going to be happy and not everyone's going to agree. And I feel this tearing of the community is going to, is very dangerous for the price there too. It can crush the price. So... Uh, so yeah, those are just some things I'm looking at as an investor and we're already, we're already in a, you know, playing with high risk investments here. So this is just magnitudes, high risk investment. So really it scares me. Uh, and one other thing I'll mention too, Ethereum had a, a, a vulnerability today in Geth that was causing a memory leak that basically caused the hash rate, the security of the Ethereum network to drop significantly. It wasn't so bad that it was really dangerous, but it was a sizable, it was significant enough to talk about. Uh, luckily, you know, Ethereum developers are really good and they fixed it in less than a day. But I was thinking to myself, what if the hacker found the vulnerability and because Ethereum and Ethereum Classic have such similar, uh, such similar programming, what if they just open the vulnerability on the Ethereum Classic chain? 
Uh, I'm thinking if the Ethereum developers weren't in a hurry to fix it or didn't fix it, would the Ethereum Classic developers, who again, we haven't seen them prove themselves or anything, would they be able to fix it that quickly? We don't know. Uh, but that would be very scary. It would open it up to a 51% attack, excuse me, and more so could cause uh, a lot of loss of confidence, which is again, very dangerous for the price. So as an investor, I am just very, very, very leery of Ethereum Classic, and it's just not an attractive uh, investment for me. But I thought I'd get this out there. I've been seeing a lot of videos on YouTube about Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and I'm just thinking, dear God, there's people out there who don't even know what's going on there. So I just wanted to share my perspective on it. Uh, you know, of course, do what you guys will. Uh, I just want to, you know, give you guys some information and, you know, give you some food for thought. So uh, that's it for now. If you like the video, of course, hit the like button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.